In this video, we'll look at how to graph a rational function in the form of f at x equals ax plus b over cx plus d. In other words, a line over a line, or a line divided by a line. The equation I gave as the example is 4x plus 6 over 2x minus 1. So there's four things we want to look for. The first would maybe be holes. I always would check for holes first. That would occur if something on the top factored. Oh, there is something. I could pull a 2 out of the top here. So I would get 2. If I factored a 2 out of here, I would get 2. And this would be x plus 3. And then on the bottom, I still have 2x minus 1. If there was a hole, then this would both be 2x plus 3 or both be 2x minus 1. It, it isn't. They're not common factors. There's no hole or none. Let's put none. All right, we've got that. What else do we want to look for? Let's start with the x-intercepts. For the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0. Whenever you're finding your x-intercept, y equals 0. So you get, this is still f at x here, the y value, or f at x. So 0 equals 2 times 2x plus 3. Or you could use this one, both are good. All over 2x minus 1. Now notice, you could times both sides by 2x minus 1, times 2x minus 1, times 2x minus 1, and you would get rid of this denominator. You'd still have 0 on the left side, and these would cancel, and you have 2, 2x plus 3. And you could even divide both sides by 2 here. Divide this by 2, divide this by 2, and now you've just got 0 equals 2x plus 3. Wow, it's becoming real simple, real quick, to find the x-intercept. Set y equal to 0 and start to solve with easy moves. Now I'm just going to subtract 3 both sides. And I get negative 3 equals 2x. How do you get x by itself? Divide by 2. And so x equals negative 3 over 2. So the x-intercept is at negative 3 halves, or negative 1.5, comma 0. Got my x-intercept. How about my y-intercept? For the y-intercept, set x equal to 0. So, I'm going to leave it as function notation and say f at 0 equals. You can use either equation. I'll use this one. I think it'll go a little faster. It doesn't matter. 4 times 0 plus 6 over 2 times 0 minus 1. 4 times 0 is just 0. Plus 6 is 6. 2 times 0 is just 0. Minus 1 is just negative 1. So you get negative 6. In other words, the y-intercept is at an x of 0, y of negative 6. We've got our x-intercept, we've got our y-intercept. We have no holes. The last two things you want to look for are the asymptotes, particularly the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote. I'm going to use this equation when I'm doing that. You can use this one, but I think the top one's easier. For the vertical asymptote, let's start with that. For the vertical asymptote, I want to find out what would make this denominator zero. So the vertical asymptote will be what makes 2x minus 1 0? That's easy to solve for. Add 1 both sides. Get 2x equals 1. You get x by itself, divide by 2. This tells me there's a vertical asymptote at 0 0.5 or a half. How do you find the horizontal asymptote? There are tricks for some of these things. You can look up in your textbook or from a board note to find out there's a pattern why this is negative 3 over 2 and why this is negative 6. You can memorize some of those patterns, but I like to show my work. That way I don't to do memorization. So for horizontal asymptote, you could remember what the pattern is, or you could just say what happens when x gets really large. If you subbed in a thousand out here, you get 4,006 over 2,000, take away one, you get about 4,006 over about 2,000. If you subbed in a million, you'd get about 4 million over 2 million. Do you see the bigger number you sub in, the less and less these matter? Uh, let, me, let me show you with the actual numbers. I'll, I'll do it. So sub in a million there. You'd get 4 million plus 6. Well, that's 4 million and 6. Divided by 2 million. Take away 1, which is basically 2 million. Look what you get. Basically 2. Do you see that as you sub in big numbers here, what you get is these terms don't matter. Just the coefficients here matter. What matters is you basically get 4 divided by 2. The horizontal asymptote, therefore, is y equals always a over c. That trick I do remember, but I also make sure I test it by subbing in large numbers. Yet, yeah, it's whatever happens when you put in large numbers, you just get 4 over 2. 
which of course divides to make two. So there's a horizontal asymptote at y equals two. Vertical asymptote at x is a half. You got a y-intercept here. You don't have to box it, it just helps when you go to see the properties that you check to make sure you've accounted for them all. Now it's time to graph. Let's make a nice graph with an x-axis and a y-axis labeled with arrows. We gotta go down to negative six on the x-axis. Oh, let's make little ticks. Oh, perfect, it's gonna be just at negative six, that's great. With me, always label at least every second tick, please. Let's put ticks on the x-axis. You can use a different scale on the x-axis and the y-axis, but on each individual axis, the scale has to stay the same, positive and negative. So I'm going down by one here. This is negative two, negative four, negative six, and up by one here is two and four. I'm going to keep the same scale on the x-axis because that should work out okay. Four. Okay. Put all my stuff. X-intercept at negative a half. That's an x-intercept right here. Y-intercept at negative six, that's down here. Now I need to put a vertical asymptote at x is a half, or 0.5. So vertical asymptote, halfway to one. Put a dash line, and then label it. This is x is negative, or sorry, x is positive a half. And then the horizontal asymptote is at y equals two. Let's put that. It's a dash line. This is y equals 2. Okay, we have to pass through these two intercepts. So I know it has to close in on this asymptote. So I'll put an arrow here and I'll come down for my x intercept. And then make sure to go all the way down, curving. Like that curve, I'm going to redraw it a little bit. Curving down. There we go. But never quite touching. Let me label that negative two, negative four. So you should show that you're approaching the asymptote and never touching. On this side, what do we do if we have no points? Just show that you know I approach the asymptote but never touch. And same thing over here. You don't need a point. You just need to show the general pattern. That's how you graph a rational function in the form ax plus b over cx plus d. See if there's holes. Get the x-intercept. Get the y-intercept. Get the vertical asymptote. Get the horizontal asymptote and then sketch. Done.